so we're out on strike again today on the National Railway and again on Saturday and we've got our London Underground members on strike tomorrow uh, in pursuit of our claims for a settlement of the issues about jobs, job security, about uh, working conditions, pay and pensions. And we've been negotiating with the companies but we haven't got a deal yet so our members are heeding the call today. Uh, and we'll pursue our campaign until we get a settlement to these problems. Now, Mick, I notice you say that you haven't got a deal yet. The, the thing most people will want to know is, do you feel or are we any closer to a resolution? I believe we can get a deal readily. Uh, I've been speaking to the companies and my officers have been speaking to the companies throughout this. I think what the problem is now, we've been caught up in this uh, Tory party leadership campaign and the Department for Transport Grant Chaps is making a lot of macho and aggressive noises about unions, about railway workers, about me personally and all sorts of stuff, which is very unhelpful. He's threatened at the weekend to make all our people redundant, issuing Section 188 forms, getting rid of all the guards on the trains. He's, they want to close all the booking offices in the country so that people can't uh, buy their tickets and get assistance. So there's all sorts of problems and the rhetoric is going up. What I think Grant Chaps needs to do is calm down and allow the railway executives, the managers of these companies, to reach a deal with us uh, in collective negotiations, which I think we could do if we got a change in the weather and a change in the mood from the government and from the minister leading this dispute, we could get a deal really quickly and get the railways back to, back to a full service. I have to say, that sounds quite conciliatory um, from your point of view. Meanwhile, uh, the minister that you're talking about, Grant Shapps, uh, he's in the Daily Mail today and he's got a 16-point plan, how to smash, they say, the real strikers. So, you know, if Grant Shapps is watching today and uh, he says, oh, look, this is nothing to do with me, this is nothing to do with us, nothing to do with the, gov uh, the, the government, it's to do with the, uh, the unions and the real companies, but obviously sticking his nose in at every opportunity. What would you say to him directly? I'd say to him directly, you're the single shareholder of Network Rail and your contracts with the train operators mean he's responsible for industrial relations and the offers he puts to us. So he can either come to the table and facilitate a deal or he can may remain at a distance and allow those managers to get a sensible deal. He's put £4 billion pounds worth of cuts on the railways, which is the source of these problems. He's hobbling uh, London Transport at the minute through the cuts. We need a bit of sensible approach, a bit of conciliation from the other side of the table. I'm a person of goodwill. You can ask all the chief executives of the railway companies that I'm somebody that's willing to do a deal. We're ready and uh, willing to get that on. And if he wants to create a mood where we can get a deal, let's do so and get the public back travelling and get the railways back to normal. Can I give you the view of some of the public who've been messaging us this morning? And this same phrase keeps coming up, and it's come up from Jacqueline, for example, and from Christine. They say the rail unions are holding the country to ransom. For the people who hold that view, just explain to them why you think that isn't the case. Well, we, we're not holding the ransom. We're making no demands on the public. We're making demands on our employers. What the employers have said to us is that we want to make thousands of your people redundant. They won't even give us a number, but we believe it to be in excess of 5,000 of our members to be put out of work. They want to create changes to our contracts of employment, which is a version of fire and rehire, because there'll be worse contracts than they've got now. We haven't had a pay rise for two or three years in many cases, and they want to attack our pension schemes. It's our job as a railway trade union to defend railway workers' rights. I think pe most people understand that. But we get many messages from the public, from the travelling public, fellow workers, people on our picket line here at Euston, who are saying we're really in tune with you because we're being treated the same way or we've been robbed of all those conditions. The British working people are not getting a square deal off their employers. That's what we're asking for. And we'll support other workers. People say, oh, why don't the nurses get what you're getting? Why don't the teachers get what you're getting? They'll all be coming into this, this debate in the next few months. Many of those workers will be balloted by their trade unions because they're sick and tired of rich people, old Etonians, telling us that we've got to pull in our, 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 our purse strings and just put up with a cost of living crisis and job insecurity. And we're not prepared to do that. We want dignity and a bit of respect off the employers you, and you, off this government. They've got to change well, their tune and well, get in tune with what working people need in this country.